Every five minutes, sometimes every minute, we can't have a conversation because we're drowned out by the noise. If this was a road motorway, the village of Ballybahal would have been demolished. So through incompetence and through continuing breaches of their planning, um, they've shown no regard. The conditions are the conditions. And DAA should adhere to them and they should not be allowed just to ride over the residents. Between Frankfurt, Charles de Gaulle and Heathrow, they have fewer night flights than Dublin. So DAA needs to go to these airports and see what they're doing right and copy it. Dublin Airport is used by more than 30 million passengers yearly and is a major economic driver for the country. But its very future is now threatened due to legal disputes over the North Runway, which opened just over a year ago on the 24th of August, a day many can't forget. My daughter started crying because she got a huge fright from the noise of the planes. She was terrified by how low they were and she was just, you know, what, why is this happening? The same with my son. He also had a, a huge fright. Neve knew there would be some noise living near an airport, but this was different. Being woken early to the sound of planes is now part of the morning ritual for her family. If you're woken up at night by noise, you're going to be more tired the next day. And this can interfere, obviously, with your attention and your ability to learn. But also, just in relation to hearing that level of noise, it's associated with increased anxiety and actual depression in children. There's two big studies in relation to the effect on kids, and they together push that fact that it has an effect on your learning recognition and your reading ability. And worryingly, it shows that a 10 decibel increase in noise can be associated with a one month delay in reading um, ability for a child. As a doctor, Neve understands more than most the wider health impacts of plane noise. I had issues with my blood pressure during the year and how it works is that even if you think you're not annoyed by a loud noise, your brain processes it and you produce stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline. It causes a rise in your blood pressure a long-term exposure to high blood pressure obviously will have effects on your heart. It can be associated with increased risk of stroke, of heart attacks. Neve and her husband Brian got planning for their dream home in 2018. We knew the way the flight paths were meant to be. Certain homes had mitigation measures in place and buyout offered and so on in relation to where the planes were meant to fly. So to be honest, maybe naively, we were we thought that everything would be absolutely fine because, you know, it wasn't anywhere in the planning that this was actually going to happen. Neve's daughter has started in Kilkoskin National School, where her son goes to play school. Both are under the flight path. They really have a strong emphasis on outdoor um, play and activity. And obviously, you know, you can insulate the inside the school, but you can't insulate the outdoors. And as that is the ethos of the school, um, it has even more of an impact um, on her on a daily basis. Since the 1960s, Dublin Airport has wanted parallel runways to allow it greater flexibility when it comes to landings and takeoffs. In 2007, planning was granted and the flight path was envisioned to go straight from the runway. And Fingal County Council restricted planning permission on this land. Mitigation measures such as sound insulation in homes were also done based on this straight flight path. But it wasn't until last year that the 320 million euro runway was finished and planes took off and they went on a totally different flight path than the one mapped out in those 16 year old plans. So now those planes are flying over areas that were never planned to be flown over. And because of the turning of the plane, they're at far lower altitudes because as they're turning, they can't climb as fast. And also because they're turning as they rise, they're putting more force into the engines, which is causing more noise. Pierre Sutton lives beside the airport and his house was insulated by the Dublin Airport Authority. 
but it is now much closer to the new flight path. This summer has been a disaster. Uh, if you go out to the garden and, uh, you know, especially during the summer period, there are planes going over every two minutes and so on. You can't talk, you can't hear each other and so on. That's all been taken away from you with respect to enjoyment of your house and your garden. The DAA admitted some houses had been unexpectedly overflown to the surprise of experts. My understanding is that the noise uh, path that had been identified was actually then different when it went into operation. Uh, and I, I think that clearly is something that should have been avoided, you know, trying to uh, convince people that they wouldn't be impacted only to find out that they would. Uh, I can understand how that led to a lot of anger. Everybody wants to go to a very sunny destination during the summer or uh, uh, during the winter even but nobody wants to be living next to an airport, and that's primarily due to the noise exposure. The DAA did alter the flight path in February following consultations with AirNav, the regulator of airspace and air traffic control. But the flight path is still very different to the one that was planned. It's upsetting people who live in built-up areas up to 20 kilometres from the airport in Ratot, Ashburn and Ballybahal. Garrett O'Brien, a private pilot from Ashburn, is campaigning for a better flight path. I kind of got involved in a small group in the town here, um, some commercial pilots, another private pilot. Um, those guys live a bit further south of here, where the aircraft noise is even worse because they're lower and making an incredible racket. Again, on a flight path that nobody expected. Using a simulator, we can fly the same flight path as the planes that take off from the north runway. Fasten your seatbelts. And we're climbing on the standard flight path. Now we are making a serious right-hand turn at 400 feet above the ground, as you can see. And we will then straighten up and then we will continue climbing. But at this point, we're still only passing through 2,000 feet. So we've just gone over the school and now we're banking again to the left. So all of this turning and swerving is keeping us closer to the ground for much longer time. From the co-pilot seat, you see the houses below clearly. We're now heading up in the general direction of Ashburn. And now we've gone over, right over the top of Ratot. So there's 12,000 people living under where we are right now. And we're still on full power climbing to gain altitude and, and get out of here. Garrett says it doesn't have to be this way, as there is another possible flight path. Under the campaign group's alternative flight path proposal, the north runway takeoffs would stick closer to the planning permission and so avoiding residential areas and Kilkoska National School, where Neve's daughter goes. The DAA say they had to alter the original North Runway flight path for safety reasons, over concerns about interfering with the holding pattern planes use when they can't land at first go on the South Runway. This is called a missed approach and happens two or three times a day. But Garrett has an alternative, and we flew it. It's a windy day, we're rocking and rolling. So just like this, we get down and the pilot makes the decision that it's too dangerous to land. Primetime has learned that alternative missed approaches for the south runway were briefly examined but dismissed. A letter from AirNav to the Department of Transport says such a change could impact on military airspace. This is the missed approach that AirNav told us couldn't be done. We've just come down over empty fields. We're already back up at 4,000 feet. And that military airspace, have we entered that? That was way over there. We never got anywhere close to it. But we're now level, quiet, and heading back out to sea. AirNav Ireland also said they will be willing to assist the DAA in re-looking at the flight paths though any change would need to be accepted by other stakeholders, including the military. Magdalena and Adrian Kilik went searching for their first home together during COVID when there were fewer flights. 
We started to dreaming about a house with a garden, um, with the access to, to greenery so we could have walks, so we can as well start our family. When they bought in Pormarnock a year ago, they knew there would be some airport nights, but as their home was a new build, they thought it would be tolerable. So imagine that you have a plane going through your roof every second minute, and, some, and in your sleep, someone talks to you. That's kind of the feeling which I get, right? I'm sleeping and someone talks to me loudly every second minute. A major restriction of the planning permission given in 2007 for the North Runway was the cap of 65 flights a night for the airport. But this is routinely broken. It went specifically this summer beyond the normal. So on average, there was about 120, 130 flights per night, which as you can imagine, it's very disturbing. Fingal County Council took an enforcement order case against the DAA for breaching the night flight cap. The DAA was granted leave for a judicial review and a stay on the enforcement notice. This is opposed by the local authority. It seems bizarre to me that you could spend hundreds of millions of euro to build a new runway designed to increase the capacity of the airport and the net effect is that because of the planning uh, rules around that you're reducing the capacity. What a waste of money that would be. Heathrow, Charles de Gaulle and Frankfurt are among the airports that do limit flying at night. But the DAA has warned a reduction in nighttime flights would result in the mass cancellation of flights. So when an airport decides to cut down their capacity, because that's cutting down the capacity, meaning banning flights during the night that has significant effects, not only on the economic contribution of the airport and the operations, but I will say also to a large extent to the residents. We need to remember that certain airports, they rely heavily on air transport for delivering of critical resources. Owen King is an acoustics and noise control expert. He visited Magdalena's house where the planning guidelines say the internal sound should not exceed 35 decibels. So there we, have, we heard a flight flying over. The background noise level, when no one was speaking and we couldn't hear, was around 30. Um, when that flight was flying over, you saw that that shot up to 52. DB. The World Health Organization says average levels of 40 decibels at night cause health problems. The figures used by the WHO and airport authorities are recorded over a number of hours and then averaged out. But the noise levels we recorded showed the highs that are reached when planes fly overhead. People hear spikes, people hear that big noise level. This happens over and over throughout the night. That'll wake you up, you won't be able to sleep with a noise level of 50-something dB in your bedroom. We recorded spikes of more than 80 decibels outside Pierce's house. Quite uncomfortable for anybody who haven't put up with that. Absolutely. We, can, we can't even speak now. There's another plane flying up. We probably can't even. Yeah, it's, it's, tough to, it's tough to communicate here. There were similar spikes of close to 80 decibels at Neve's house and Kilkoskin School. We could insulate the building, but once you open a window, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. And kids, an important part of growing up is, is kicking a football in a playground or coming out here and running around. You can't insulate a playground, much like you can't insulate someone's back garden. The DAA is seeking to replace the nighttime flight restriction with a noise quota system, which could lead to quieter, but more planes. What we do is we assign less points to quieter aircraft and more points to more noisy aircraft. So in a way that influences the behavior of the aircraft operator. So it incentivizes them uh, to put the more quiet aircraft to Dublin airport and also operating those quieter aircraft during the night. As far as I know, there are no planes already existing which are silent. There are no electric planes yet. The Irish Aviation Authority has already allocated slots for next summer, so there will be a similar number of nighttime flights, unless the courts rule that the airport must comply with the planning restrictions, limiting flights to 65 a night. 
I think it would certainly uh, reduce the, if you like, the efficiency of the airport, which could drive additional airport charges and uh, anything that increases the costs uh, that the airport levy against airlines ultimately finds its way through to the price that uh, the ticket prices that passengers pay. So when you're looking at reasons as why your flight has been delayed or cancelled and um, issues with cargo, we did not create this scenario. We are fighting for our own human rights here, um, our right to peace and our right to choice. Neave there finishing Kieran Deneen's report. Well, yesterday I went out to Dublin Airport to speak to Kenny Jacobs, CEO of the DAA, and I began by putting it to him that because of decisions he and the DAA have made, including too many night flights, they've made life unbearable for some people. So the permission for the North Runway wasn't linked to uh, the, the flight paths in particular. There was a number of movements. This is very, very unclear uh, as part of the planning permission. What's also unclear is how you would implement it. Um, and that's why we're looking to change this. Now, that's our view. That's also the view of uh, Fingal County Council. It's the view of ANCA, the noise regulator. That's moving from a number of movements to a noise quota and changing the hours of operation so that we can operate flights on the North Runway up until midnight and from 6 a.m each day. There is overall, and this is really, really important, there's a 50% reduction this year, this summer, in the number of households impacted by noise compared to 2019. So we've made very good progress. There's more that we need to do and we'll continue to engage with the community. But try telling that, I suppose, to Neve in the film we just saw there. She's a doctor, she understands lots of things about health impacts and she's saying the noise that she and her family are putting up with, including the noise at the school where her children go, is simply having a dire effect on their health. And, and, and we take that very seriously. And noise, particularly at night time, uh, for kids is really, really important. Look, I'm a parent myself. Uh, I live near Dublin Port. We can hear noise sometimes. There will always be an element of noise at an airport. That's a fact of, that's a fact of life. What's good is that planes are getting significantly quieter. And what's good is the approach that we're taking. This is a highly regulated industry here in Ireland. And there's a noise regulator. But there's many things that we are doing. You know, we've insulated 150 homes of the 200 homes the noise regulator said that we should. We have a grand scheme of up to 20,000 available for an, an additional 350. So will you homes. insulate, for instance, Neve's home? We absolutely will go and meet Neve as we meet people in the community every single week. Um, and if noise is at a certain level, and that's about 63 decibels for a sustained period, if there's a level of noise like that, and in this room here now as we're speaking, this is about 40 decibels. But it's when it's at 63 decibels that a household is eligible for insulation. We've insulated a lot of households. We want to do more. And anyone who's genuinely impacted by noise, who has kids and has an issue uh, sleeping, we absolutely will go and meet them and look to insulate their home. But in fact, the permission you got was based on environmental assessments. And on the basis of that, the flight paths were agreed. You changed that. It's a completely different flight path. The, the flight path now that we have today and the flight path since we since February of this year is the intended flight path. So the flight paths are the way they should be and we have a very high degree of compliance with those flight paths. The condition on the North Runway, which is an onerous condition that we... Fingal and Anka have agreed as owners, and that's why all of us want to change it, is based on a number of movements. Now, the number of movements we don't think is the best way to do it because you could have 65 movements on very old aircraft making far more noise than 150 movements on newer aircraft. So we want to move to a noise quota. That's much, much better. And that's managed between ourselves and the noise regulator. But do you accept that the flight path you know, now operate out of the north runway, the new runway, is different to the one originally planned? No, the flight path now out of the north runway is the one that was originally planned. When the north runway opened up in August, between August and February of this year, there was a slight deviation in the flight path. That was a mistake that we made that we already apologise and we do apologise for that period of time. But the flight path today from the north runway is the flight path that was intended. But like 20 years ago, there were public consultations involving the public, but there were different maps there was kind of homes insulated on the basis of a flight path that is now completely different. 
That's not the case with the North Runway. So, look, we, we are a good neighbour. We will continue to engage. Do you accept you're breaking your planning permission? Uh, no, I, I don't accept that. The planning permission, uh, we think, is it, it could not be implemented as it was. Look, it's totally unfeasible that the planners, when they granted the permission for the North Runway, said, OK, you can go from one runway to two runways, but you have to have the number of movements at night. No one intended that. So the planning permission is very unclear. That's why we're challenging it. Um, and that's why we want to move to a noise quota which is much much more effective. And what's the point of the noise quota in a way because it's just going to end up with more planes and no plane is quiet so that's not a solution. No I don't think it will necessarily end up in, in more flights. Look it's a much more scientific way of managing the noise and monitoring the noise. As You're I said, saying there wouldn't be more flights? It, there, there may be a small number of flights but the flights would, would have restrictions applied to them. They may be certain type of it's aircraft. It's they, noisy. They, they, may, they would be significantly less noisy aircraft than in the past. So look a, a a number of movements is a very archaic and basic way of managing it. You could have 30 year old aircraft up to 65 movements making three times the noise of modern aircraft. So it's not the best way to manage it. But try saying that to Neva Magdalena. And, and there's a good chance I will say that to, to them uh, because I'm out in the community and we have people out in the community the whole time meeting people that are that are impacted, including Kilkoskin School that was also shown in the video. So look, we take this very seriously. We want to insulate more homes. We have the grant scheme that will be available as part of the relevant action that's currently within Board of Planola. We have purchase homes. So people who are really close to the runway who who need to move because the noise is a certain level. We have purchased their home uh, higher than the market value. We have a community fund of 10 million that we make available to the community for projects to help reduce uh, noise uh, in, in, in schools and in nursing homes and places like that. And we've got 30 noise monitoring systems. Dublin as a capital city is actually much further ahead than the average European capital city when it comes to monitoring and mitigation me measures on noise. But actually, if you take Magdalena, who is in that film, like her home was supposed to be insulated to stop the noise. It really hasn't at all. And you're flying planes during the night period in excess of your planning permission. How have you allowed that to happen? And we hear, hear from Magdalena impact it's had on her life and her family's life. Yes, look, I, I would need to meet Magdalena and I'm happy to do that to really understand her specific case, but the flight paths are as they were intended. There was one onerous condition on the planning permission granted for, for the North Runway. This goes back to 2007 because we, Anka, the noise regulator, and Fingal have been trying to change this since 2007. For Magdalena, whose life is currently destroyed by the number of night flights and the noise, and you got permission on the basis that there wouldn't be more than 65, what can you say to her tonight to make her feel more sure that her life will get better? Look, what I can say is we want to help and we want to, we want to support everyone in the community. We need to balance that with the travel needs uh, of the nation and the jobs that are supported and the aspect of Ireland's economy that is supported by Dublin Airport. We're listening. We want to come and evaluate the levels of noise in homes like Magdalena's and if required at a certain level we will, we will insulate those homes and do that as quickly as we can. Of course you can have all the insulation in the world but once you open the windows or once you're outside, children are outside in the school we saw there, the noise is there and it's horrendous. Yeah and, 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 and that's that's correct on insulation generally will keep you know, bring the noise down by about 80% when you're inside. Now for Kilcoskin School which, you, which you've shown we are talking to them uh, we met them as recently uh, as last week. In Tyrrellstown School, for example, we've put an outdoor structure, which is a glass structure, which is, brings down the noise levels, still allows the children to get fresh air uh, and have protection from the elements. So with Kilskoskin School, which we've shown in the video, that's the type of solution that we would discuss with them so that the kids are able to go outside and still enjoy the open, open air space. But do you accept there's still a huge risk to this big infrastructure, the biggest in the land, and you have presided over that. Look, this is critical infrastructure. 2.3% of Ireland's economy is driven by Dublin Airport. There's 116,000 jobs supported by Dublin Airport. This is a risk that we're managing. This is a risk on which we've made very good progress and we intend to make further progress with the local community while also balancing the needs of a nation because our Dublin Airport is driving Ireland's economy. So it's a risk and it's a risk that we're living with. I think we're managing it well. We've made a mistake with the flight paths from August of last year to February of this year. We've corrected that and we've moved very, very quickly and we're sorry for that, but the flight paths are as they were intended and noise will be managed. Kenny Jacobs speaking to Maria 